Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to this course. So today we will continue with the lecture 12. So in the previous class sir, we have started with the iterative methods, the fixed point iteration. Now this in this lecture we will start with the another method and that is called the regular falsy method or this method is also known as method of false position. So, what is the meaning of this regular false method? So, in this suppose I have a function f x is equal to 0. So, this function is given to me and I want to find the root of this function. So, in the root finding the root of this function now using inter suppose I get a value of a and b and I will find that f a and f a and f a into f b is less than 1 is less than 0. So, it means that the root lies between a and b. So, what I do is that, so suppose that is my function that is x x here, this is f x and suppose my function is suppose like, like this one. So, what we do is let I start with A. So, let it this is my A and I will start with this B. Okay. So, I call it x 0 and I will call it x 1. <coughs> so, now what based on this one I will try to So, this is my equation and that is the line we are passing through this one. So, what I will do is that I will see that where this line is cutting the x axis. So, this is the place it is cutting the x axis that, that is the place. Now, I will call this place is another approximation and I will call it x 2. Now, based on this x 2, now I will take another line passing through this and then I will get see the things where it is cutting the x axis. So, that is the point it is x 3 and so on and ultimately we are reaching because that is the place the, the, this is the root of the equation and we are reaching toward this one in the iterative process in the iterative way. So, that is called the regular falsy method. <coughs> so, in this case, so I start with x 0 and x 1 and I will write the equation. So, equation of the line this will be y minus y 1. So, that is equal to, so now in this case I have the value of this one and the value of this one is, so I can write here y 1 minus y 0 and then x 1 minus x 0 x minus x 0 and maybe I can take this equal. So, y minus y 0. So, this is my x 0. So, that point in my x 0 y 0 and this is my point x 1 y 1. So, based on this one, I, this is the equation of the line y minus y 0 is equal to y 1 minus y 1 minus y, two, y 0 x 1 minus x 0 and x minus x 0. So, that is the equation of the line. Now, I want to see that where this line is cutting the x axis. So, by putting y equal to 0 in this case. So, I will get this point value. So, if I put y equal to 0, I will get minus y 0 is equal to y 1 minus y 0 x 1 minus x 0 
x minus x 0. So, based on this one, I can write from here my x can be written as, so I will write from here it becomes x naught, this x naught I will take on the left side minus y naught x 1 minus x naught divided by y 1 minus y naught. So, this is the ultimately I am getting, so I will just simplify further, so it will becomes x 0 y 1 minus y 0 minus y 0 x 1 minus x 0 divided by y 1 minus y naught. So, that is the value I am getting. So, from here x naught y naught and minus this is the minus x naught y naught and this is the minus minus plus. So, this will cancel out. So, from here I will get x naught y 1 minus y naught x 1 divided by y 1 minus y naught. So, based on this one I will get my process x is equal to x naught y naught is what f at x naught minus y 1. So, it is y 1. So, that is equal to y 1 minus y naught is f at x naught into x 1 divided by f of x 1 minus f of x 0. It means I in this case I need two initial approximations like in the bisection also I need two initial approximation, but in the iterative process fixed point iteration I need only one approximation to start the process, but here I need two x naught and x 1 and based on this one. So, this methods can be written at in the iterative process. So, I can write from here that x, so 0 and 1 is there, so I, from here I can write my x n plus 1 is equal to x n minus 1 f x n minus x n f at x minus 1 divided by f at x n minus f at x n minus 1. So, that is my iterative process where my n is, so in this case if I put the n is equal to 2, so it will be 0 and 1. So, it will start from 2, 3, 4 and so on. Because if I put 2, then I need 2 and 1, so it will be the 3. Or maybe you can start with 1, in that case it will be x1 and x0 and you will get x2. So, based on this one, that is the iterative process we can have. Now, so, what we will do in this case? The first step is that find the value of a and b. So, this process we can say that this is the step number 1, finding the value of a and b and then after that I will get the value of x. So, this is my step 2. Okay. So, step 2 based on this one. Now, compute my f at x. So, whatever the x I am getting, I will get my f x. Okay. So, based on this f x and its sign, if f at x and f at x 1. So, if it is greater than 0, then my x 1 will be x. Otherwise, if f x into f x 0 is negative, then my x 1 will be x 0 will be x, because in this case there will be opposite sign and I will choose this x is equal to x naught. This is my sorry x 1, 
this is my x1 okay so if f x and f x in greater than 0 then i will choose my x1 is equal to x and if f x and f x1 is less than 0 then i will choose my x0 as x so once i do this one we will repeat will repeat this process till approximation approximate root is achieved is found. So, in this case that is called the regular falsy method. Another method is based on the same way, but that is another method and that is called the secant method. So, it is same as the regular falsy method. Same as the regular falsy method except except the initial condition. Because in the regular falsy we have to find f a into f b of opposite sign and then based on the, the intermediate value theorem we can start with the process. But in this case we there is no need of this one. So, it works at the same way. So, let us uh, write this one. So, suppose I have a function like this and suppose in this case I will write take a function value of a and this is another value of b and I do not care whether a and b are of the opposite sign because in the regular falsy I was taking my a here and b here. So, that was the opposite sign, but in this case I do not does not matter. So, what I do I find the value of secant. And I will check that where this value of the secant is cutting the x axis. So, this is the place it is cutting the axis. So, I can take a, a, a this one and I will get this value of that is my x2. And you see that after this x2, now I get the value of f x2. And this is so I can choose any of this value into x2. So, from here you can see that now my f of x 2 and f of x 1 they are of opposite sign. So, in this case now after that it will be same work will be same as the regular falsy method. So, I only accept the initial condition the secant method is same as the regular falsy method. So, there is no need to repeat this one only we have to change the initial approximation that wherever whatever the initial point I would want to take we can choose that one. So, that is the now from from here now I want to find the order of convergence. of regular falsy. So, how we can find the order of convergence of the regular falsy method? So, I have my equation f x equal to 0 and based on this one I can choose my so that is alpha is the exact root. So, we can have the exact root here now I can take my E n is equal to the error at the nth step. So, I my regular falsy method is this one x n plus 1 is equal to x n minus 1 f x n minus x n f x n minus 1 divided by f x n minus f x n minus 1. Now, I can write this equation equation number 1 in the terms of the errors. So, from here I can write my x n is equal to alpha minus E n. So, from here I can write my 
this equation is alpha minus e n plus 1 is equal to. So, x n can be written as alpha minus e n minus 1 f of alpha minus e n minus x n I can write as alpha minus e n f of alpha minus e n minus 1 divided by f of alpha minus e n minus f of alpha minus e n minus 1. So, that we have written every term everything in the terms of the error. So, based on this one <coughs> now I can alpha minus e n minus 1. So, this f I can expand using the Taylor series expansion as we have done in the previous case also. So, it will be f of alpha minus e n f dash alpha plus e n square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha and the later all the higher terms we can ignore. So, this will be here minus alpha minus e n and now again I can expand by Taylor expansion. So, it will be f of alpha minus e n minus 1 f dash alpha plus e n minus 1 square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha and so on divided by my f of alpha minus e n f dash alpha plus e n square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha and so on minus f of alpha minus e n minus 1 f dash alpha then plus e n minus 1 square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha and so on. Now, we know that f of alpha is 0. So, this will be 0, this will be 0, here this will be 0, this value will be 0. So, based on this one, I can write my alpha minus e n plus 1 is equal to this alpha, this will also cancel out because that will be the minus alpha and this is the plus alpha and this value will be 0. So, based on this one I can write all the terms corresponding to f dash alpha. So, I will write the term f dash alpha and then the coefficient. So, if you see f dash, so this is 0, this is 0. 0, 0. So, it will be based on this one, it will be E n minus 1 E n. So, E n minus 1 E n, E n, E n minus 1, okay, because it is a negative sign here. So, minus E n will go there. So, it will be plus and then minus sign. So, this one. So, f dash plus f double dash alpha. So, f double dash alpha will be I will take this one inside. So, it will be minus e n minus 1 e n square by 2 factorial. Okay. So, this is minus sign. So, plus e n e n minus 1 square by 2 factorial this one and so on we can write it divided by. So, this one divided by. So, here I can find out this value. So, from here my f dash alpha will be minus e n plus e n minus 1 plus f double dash alpha so, f double dash alpha will be e n square by 2 factorial and this minus will, so it will be e n minus 1 square by 2 factorial and so on. So, this one is here. Now, from here I can find the value of, so we have to just do it again. it will be alpha 
and this is alpha minus this. So, let us do this calculation again. So, this will become minus E n f dash alpha plus E n square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha. All other term will be cancelled or uh, ignored minus alpha minus E n. So, minus E n minus 1 f dash alpha plus E n minus 1 square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha and all other higher terms will be ignored divided by this one. So, this is uh, the same way we have written. So, it will be f dash alpha minus E n plus E n minus 1 plus f double dash alpha. So, f double dash alpha will be by 2 you can take and it will be E n square minus E n minus 1 square. So, this is we can we get after doing the calculation and based on this one now I can write I can multiply this one by this factor. So, it will be minus alpha E n f dash alpha plus alpha E n square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha then plus E n E n minus 1 f dash alpha and then minus E n cube or E n square into E n minus 1 by 2 factorial f double dash alpha. So, this will, will ignore all the powers uh, three, 3 powers and more than that. So, we will ignore this one minus the same way I will get alpha minus alpha E n minus 1 f dash alpha plus alpha E n minus 1 square by 2 factorial f double dash alpha okay. and then minus the so plus E n minus 1 E n f dash alpha and then later on minus E n E n minus 1 square by 2 factorial that and other terms. So, this term also we ignore because it gives the E n into E n square. So, it is a of order of E n cube. So, this one divided by this factor. So, from here I can choose my factor. So, I from here I can find out that E n minus E n minus 1. So, this one I can take common. So, this one I can write as a f dash alpha plus f dash alpha by 2 E n plus E n minus 1. So, this I got and based on this one. So, from here I can write that alpha minus E n plus 1. Now, let us uh, find out the value of f dash alpha. So, f dash alpha can be written as alpha E n. So, minus alpha E n and minus and minus plus. So, plus alpha E n minus 1. So, this one can be written as plus f double dash alpha. So, f double dash alpha will becomes alpha E n square by take 2 factorial minus alpha E n minus 1 by 2 factorial and that is the value and all other terms. So, this is f dash is also coming from here this factor and this factor, but this factor if you see it is with the negative sign and with the positive sign. So, this will cancel out. So, divided by the same. E n minus E n minus 
this factor. So, based on this one if I choose here then I can write my alpha if I take the alpha common. So, from here I can write minus alpha E n minus E n minus 1 f dash alpha this one I can return as plus f double dash alpha by 2 factorial E n plus E n minus 1 into E n minus E n minus 1. So, based on this one I can write here and the same thing. So, I can take my E n minus E n minus 1 common and based on this one I will get minus alpha f dash plus f double dash by 2 into alpha. So, based on this one in the ultimately in the end we will get alpha E n plus E n minus 1 minus E n E n minus 1. Okay, I have this cancel out. So, maybe I will need to keep these terms because I am choosing my E n and minus E n minus 1 common. So, after that I will get this value in the terms of f double dash. So, this value, this value, this value. So, we have to keep it divided by So, this will cancel. So, I will get e raised to power n plus 1 is equal to from here I can write this value is equal to minus alpha plus. So, I can take my f dash common from here. So, I will get minus alpha and I will get f double dash by 2 f dash from here divided by alpha e n plus e n minus 1 minus e n e n minus 1 divided by. So, f dash I am I can take the f dash from here. So, it will be minus 1 plus f double dash by f dash into 2 and this will be e n plus e n minus 1. I have taken the f dash from both from the numerator and from the denominator. So, I call it f double dash. Now, based on this one, I choose f double dash is equal to 2 f dash is equal to some k. So, that I will take as a value k. So, based on this one I will get the value and then I will take this value on the numerator. So, it becomes minus alpha plus k alpha e n plus e n minus 1 minus e n e n minus 1 and then based on this one I will get. So, I will I can take the minus sign here. So, 1 minus f double dash by k e n plus e n minus 1 and this uh, sign will cancel out. So, I will keep it alpha and I will write it minus. So, this is plus alpha. minus 1. So, based on this one I can write this alpha minus k e n plus e n minus 1 minus e n e n minus 1 into 1 plus k e n plus e n minus 1. So, this one I will expand using the binomial expansion okay. plus k square e n plus e n minus 1 square and so on. 
So, that is my binomial expansion. So, now ignoring <coughs> the third order or higher order term of E n and E n minus 1. So, based on this one, I will ignore this term. So, you will see from here that this will cancel out and after cancellations, I will get the value alpha plus k e n minus 1 into e n. If you expand this one, it will cancel out and then ultimately I will get this value. So, this from here alpha will cancel and from here I can write my e n plus 1 is equal to minus k e n minus 1 e n. So, I will get this value. Now, I can choose my k is equal to minus of k that is minus of f double dash is equal to 2 k f dash. So, based on this one I just get rid of this negative sign. So, I will get E n minus 1 E n. Now, we know that that E n is equal to c E n minus 1 p where p is the order of convergence. So, that we can write down. So, from here I can write my the value of E n minus 1 is equal to E n by c power 1 by p. So, from here I can write E n plus 1 is equal to k E n into E n by c power 1 by p. So, from here I can write this equation as equation number star can be written as star can be written as c e n power p is equal to k e n 1 plus 1 by p power c 1 by p. Okay. So, from here I can write so, this c I can take this side. So, I will get my c 1 plus 1 by p e n p is equal to k e n 1 plus 1 by p. So, this one I will get. So, based on this one I can say that 1 plus 1 by p is equal to p because c is 1 plus 1 by p e n p and here e n is equal to 1 plus 1 by p. So, from here I can say that 1 plus 1 by p is equal to p. So, based on this one I will get a quadratic in p. So, from here I can write p plus 1 is equal to p square. So, p square minus p minus 1 equal to 0 and based on the root of this equation I will get the positive root that we can choose from here that will be under root 5 by 2 and its value is coming 1.62 ignoring the, the negative root because negative root means that if I take the negative value p it that shows that with the as the iteration will grow the error will grow. So, in that case it will never converge. So, for the convergence I choose only positive value of p and that value of the p is coming this one. Okay. So, that is the order of convergence and based on this we can also have. So, c p is equal to k because p 1 plus p is equal to p. So, that is c p is equal to k. So, from here c is equal to k 1 by p and that is the value of k 0 0.62. So, that is the value of c we can calculate. So, based on this one I can say that the regular false c method or secant method has order of convergence 
that is equal to 1.62. So, it is more than the linear convergence, but less than the quadratic convergence. So, it is the in between the convergence we can have. So, that is the order of convergence we get for the regular falsi method. So, in this uh, uh, lecture, we have discussed the regular falsi method, the secant method and then its order of convergence and it shows that the order of convergence in this case is 1.62 as compared to the, the order of convergence in the bisection was, that was the 1 and in the case of fixed point iteration it was the 1. So, in this regular fossil method is we can call is the high order method as compared to the iterative method, uh, fixed point iteration method. So, thanks uh, in this lecture. So, thanks for viewing. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.